Hello everyone. Welcome to this lecture of the course Digital Electronics and Circuits. And in this lecture, we would be talking about analysis of sequential circuits. In the previous lecture, we looked at uh, latches and flip flops, and we uh, talked about uh, sequential circuit in terms of the memory element it has. And at the end of the previous lecture, we spoke about D flip flop, T flip flop, and JK flip flop. In this particular lecture, right, we will analyze few of the sequential circuit and in the next one we will be designing a few of the sequential circuits so the topic of this lecture is analysis of sequential circuit correct uh, with this if you have to capture the review of what we spoke about flip-flops last time is we looked at the characteristic equations right we had three flip-flop uh, qt plus one of d is equal to d for d flip-flop for t flip-flop qt plus one is equal to t xr qt and similarly qt plus one for j and k flip-flop is equal to j q bar plus k bar qt this we saw last time, right? We draw the characteristic table and we uh, uh, arrived at these characteristic equations for there, from there, right? Now, while analyzing few of the sequential circuits, right? Uh, let's let's begin with the circuit. Let's begin with a simple circuit uh, where we have like two J and K flip flops, right? Let's assume we have this circuit, and uh, this is like J, C, K. J, C, K, Q. This is like Q bar. This is Q. This is Q bar. Right. And uh, basically, we have a clock. Let's assume these are positive edge trigger flip flops. Right. And what we say at the end is uh, we have a circuit. This is a given circuit. Okay. This circuit is available to us and we will be analyzing this sequential circuit. We are having an AND. And basically the thing over here is, okay, we got something wrong over here. Yeah. So let's assume this is input X. This is one output Z. Right, and once we talk, let's assume both of them are connected to same clock C1. This is also connected to same clock C1. And at the input, right, this particular input, there is an AND gate. And let's assume this is J1, first flip flop. This is X bar, let's assume Q0. This is an OR gate. This is K1, and this is X, Q0. This is a particular reason why we are choosing this circuit. This will come to know while we are analyzing this, right? Once we are done analyzing this circuit, we will come to know why this particular circuit was chosen. And as of today, we are as of to, uh, to today, right? We are not drawing this circuit. This circuit is available to us. We are just analyzing it. Correct. And let's assume K is nothing but X bar. So what we have in this case, we have like two flip flops which are J and K. And then we have set of inputs. Input is what? X is one input. X is used here, here, here. And Q0, Q1 are nothing but the current states of these flip-flops. This is flip-flop number one. This is flip-flop number zero. Correct? And that's why we called this intermediately. We call these inputs as J0, J1, K1. And this is like K0. K0 is nothing but X0. Correct? So here's a sequential circuit with two JK flip-flops. There's an input X and then there's an output Z, right? The values of the flip-flops, this particular ones, basically Q1 and Q0, correct? They form the state or the memory of the circuit. And in this particular case, flip-flop outputs also go back into the primitive gates. These outputs go back into primitive gates on the left. This matches the abstraction of the sequential circuit diagram, which we saw in the beginning where we had like combinational circuit, we had a memory element and we said this is a sequential circuit, right? 
we can analyze a combinational circuit by driving a truth table that is what we saw for uh, majority of our combinational circuits and uh, a truth table shows how the circuit outputs are generated from its inputs right but in a sequential circuit the outputs are dependent upon not only the inputs but also the current state of the flip flops so to understand how the sequential circuits work we have to know the memory changes and for that we already spoke about that we have a state table which is a sequential analog of our truth table it shows inputs and current states along with the outputs and the next states so basically if you remember from our uh, ex like a discussion on a particular rs latch right and just to draw it over here as well we said something like this that we have r we had one more flip flop in or gate sorry and then we inputted it over here this was s this was q this was q bar and we spoke about state table for this thing and we said state table for this is nothing but we have set of inputs which are r and s we have current state i hope you recall all these things q q bar and we have a next state q and q bar and here we said when both are zero irrespective of like both and both are zero my current state is maintained if it is 0 1 it will remain 0 1 if it is 1 0 it will remain 1 0 if it is reset and set right irrespective of what the states are over here output over here would be 0 1 0 1 1 0 1 0 right this is something we called as a state table correct so basically now if i have to analyze this particular circuit example which we have over here right we will have to draw a state table for this particular example so let's get into drawing the state table for this particular example what we can do instead is right right and what we can do is we can start with our circuit again so we had a jk flip flop over here and then a jk flip flop over here this we named as 0 this we named as 1 here we had a j1 input which was nothing but and of x bar and q0 and our k1 was or of x and q0 clock was same in both of them here our k0 was equal to x bar and then our we had a or operation over here my j0 was equal to x1 q0 right and the output over here q and the output over here q and the input x were forming the output let's assume z so this was our original circuit correct let's call this q0 this let's call this q1 now a state table for the example circuit is shown below right let's draw it we have a present state inputs then we will have next state and outputs let's assume our present states are nothing but two states q1 and q0 correct our inputs is nothing but a value x our next state would be the next state of q1 and q0 and output is z so if we have to draw this particular table right what we would say is let's assume our present state was how many combinations are possible 0 0 0 0 0 1 right if we have this particular combination correct uh, let's assume see z is directly depending upon the next state correct so my z output is q1 dot q0 i can simply say over here z is equal to q1 dot q0 dot x so what would be the z be it will be and of all these things so it will be zero everywhere rather than in one situation where output over here is one right and this kind of a circuit uh, just to give you a nomenclature right this kind of a circuit where output which is like output is function of both input plus present state is called as milli machine 
we will see a circuit later where we will say that output is function only of present state that will be called Moore machine but for time being let's uh, remember that this is a Mealy machine where output is dependent both on the present state as well as one of the inputs correct now the important is thing is right uh, to determine the next state of the device if we have to determine what is the next state of the device we will need to know that what are the input values over here because Q1, Q0 are depend, uh, dependent upon J1 and K1 and J1 and K1 are further dependent upon Q bar, Q0, right? So let's write down these equations. So J1 is nothing but Q bar dot X0, K1 is equal to X or with Q0, J0 is X1 or with Q1, K0 is X bar. Correct, these are the equations which we can see these are the flip-flop input equations and for determining this next state right what we will have to do is we have to determine something like what are the flip-flop inputs and the flip-flop inputs would be what j1 k1 j0 k0 correct now j1 is equal to this particular thing x bar dot q0 now if we start populating this table x bar dot q0 right 1 dot 0 is 0 0 1 dot 1 so this will be 0 0 0 1 0 similarly k1 is x this plus this so this will be 0 here 0 here as all it will be 1 correct so it's like 0 1 1 1 0 1 1 1 similarly j0 is x plus q1 these two summations so this will be 0 here 1 here 0 here 1 here rest everywhere it will be or and it will be 1 k0 is not of x bar so it will be like 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 correct so we had this given circuit and based upon this given circuit we said like output is dependent upon both inputs inputs as well as the present state so this is an example of milli machine then what we did was we tried uh, drawing a state table in the state table we said okay we should have present state inputs next state and outputs we knew present state combination since we have three variables we had eight entries of uh, truth uh, state table uh, we derived output based upon this where we said output is q1 q0 into x so we had an output column but to determine this next state which is q1 and q0 what we had to do was we need to know what is the output over here for j and k flip flops right if this would have been a d flop it would have been simple because next state of d, uh, input of d flip flop is simply equal to d right qt plus 1 is equal to d but for j and k flip flop next state is dependent upon inputs and for knowing these inputs we need to have the input values j k and stuff now what will be the next state our next states will depend upon these values and for uh, j k and k flip flop we knew that uh, qt plus 1 is equal to j q bar plus k bar q right now we can drive this input uh, next states using these input values correct what will be this flip-flop inputs and next state in that case if let's assume i'm talking about q1 what would be q1 both are zero if both are zero j q bar and k bar q will be q so it will retain its present state so q1 would be equal to present state q1 which will be equal to zero what happens in zero one when j is zero k is one output is zero when uh, j1 is 1 k1 is 1 1 this will become 0 so it's q bar it's not of q present over here so it will become 1 right and similarly let's go into the third one we have uh, 0 and 1 for 0 and 1 we would have a condition where this is 0 this is 1 so output would be 0 0 0 both are 0 so this will qt will retain the present state it will be equal to uh, so basically if both are uh, let's assume 0 0 correct in the case of both being 0 0 what would happen is yes it will uh, if both are 0 0 it will remain the present state which is equal to 1 and in case of output in case in the next case where we have 0 and 1 j being 0 k being 1 both of them will become 0 and 1 1 uh, it again will become q bar q bar is 1 so it will become 0 and again we will have our next state as 1 1 if we put like 0 1 0 and 1 output will be 0 
so this will be our state depending upon this input and the input uh, entries which we created using this flip flop inputs similarly if we drive q0 value right q0 will be based upon j0 and q0 if j0 is 0 and k0 is 1 if you put j0 as 0 k0 as 1 the output would be 0 if it is 1 and 0 j it's q bar plus q which is always equal to 1 Let's put it equal to 1, 0 over here in this equation. 1, 0, 0, 1 would be, this will become 0, this will again become, so it will be 0. So on and so forth, we can actually reach at this particular table. Right? So basically what we did over here is, our table, our state table in this case started with a present state. Right? And inputs. These are the things which we knew in the beginning because these were the combinations we were able to form. Right? This present states and inputs yield us flip flop inputs we were able to uh, drive this uh, j1 k1 value using this present state and inputs and then present state and flip flop inputs right yielded us next states based upon the flip flop characteristic table correct and present state and inputs yielded us outputs so how we drew it we, we listed down eight combination then we said my based upon present state and inputs my output will be this particular value based upon this equation and then we said like okay to be able to figuring out our next state what we have to do is we have to figure out flip flop inputs we drew a flip flop inputs table using our input present state and inputs and now using uh, flip flop inputs and present state we were able to determine the next state right so this is called a state table now same thing right the same expression we could denote using a state diagram so let's see what is a state diagram just to see right let's let's put that state uh, table again so i will just quickly capture it present state input flip flop inputs next state and output right so this is q1 q0 input is x flip flop inputs is j1 k1 j0 k0 next state is q1 q0 output is z correct and we had a combinations of all zeros 0 0 1 so basically what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to get this table value over here and what we did over here was this was 0 0 1 0 0 1 1 1 0 1 1 1 0 1 0 1 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 0 1 and our output was all zeros other than the last one right so this was our state table this is how we for a given circuit we drew a state table and let's look at the state diagram now so state diagram has a node for each possible state so basically how many possible states we had right so basically uh, we had four states 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 so we had four states for the flip flops right so diagram will have one node for each state right and this is how a state looks like so basically we will have four nodes zero 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 one one zero one one so each node is a state now basically we will have some arrows and each of the arrow in the diagram will connect present state to the next state and are labeled by input slash output so basically what i mean is if our present state is zero zero if the input is zero what do we get as an output right so output is zero and next state is zero zero so basically what how do we represent this is once we are in the state zero zero right if our input is zero 
our output is zero so input is zero and the next state is zero zero so zero zero stays back to zero zero input being zero and output being zero what if we get input as one our state changes to zero one and the output still remains zero what if we are in zero one input is zero we stay in uh, we we go into one zero mode and output stays zero all right if our input is zero output is zero now what happens when we are in zero one input comes once we move into the state called zero one we stay in the same state with an output zero input one output zero similarly now if we are in state one zero we get zero as an input we go to a state called one one with zero as an output zero zero now what happens if in the same state we get one we just go to a state called zero one so basically from here we will go here one slash zero how would one one if we get zero we go to zero zero with an output zero else we stay in this else what happens over here is we stay we go to zero one state with an output of one so this is a state diagram so pictorially we were able to represent this state table into this state diagram and this is like a easier readable version of a state table right and few checks which we have we can always do right if our circuit has n flip flops right for n flip flops they should be 2 raised to power n nodes so basically for two flip flop we have 2j and k flip flop so we should have four nodes because four states are possible right and basically if we have m inputs so each node will have 2 raised to power m outgoing arrows outgoing arrows for each node basically in our case we had only one input so 2 raised to power 1 basically two output going arrows one is this one one is this one right so this is a concept of a state diagram and i hope this analysis was clear to you and this is just analyzing a circuit for a given circuit you are able to see it's a sequential circuit how do we form a state table how do we form a state diagram for a j and k flip flop in the next lecture we will be talking about designing of sequential elements it's just analyzing them we already saw an example of j flip flop based uh, sequential circuit right now let's have an example based upon d flip flop like let's assume we have a d flip flop and then we have one more d flip flop here this is a this is a bar let's assume this is like da this is db this is b this is b bar output basically q q b q a right then uh, we have a clock which are connected to the same signal which are same let's assume they are same clocks and d over here right is a circuit let's assume db is a circuit where we have b xor with x and x is an input da is nothing but we have a sum of products it's like ax bar plus a bar bx plus ab bar x right and this is our second state uh, our outputs our outputs are only the states no dependency on input this is an example of moore machine like i spoke in the previous lecture right so we have two flip flops labeled da and db there is one output this one input sorry which is x there are no explicit outputs the outputs are just the states of the flip flops in this case right the outputs are assumed to be flip flop values a and b themselves and as i mentioned this is a example of a moore machine now if you have to analyze this circuit right let's go by the same analysis let's try to draw a state table so if we draw a state table we will have a set of present states let's assume we have a and b two states 
then we have set of inputs then we have next state and output right outputs we don't have anything else outputs are normally a and b in this particular case because states are the outputs we don't have any explicit outputs and then we have like flip flop inputs right and flip flop inputs is nothing but da and dv uh, you will see why i am writing this basically this column will was very useful this column was pretty useful for j and k flip flop but this would be redundant for d flip flop because in d flip flop qt plus 1 is equal to d right so we can directly drive it but just for the sake of completion i am writing it over here let's look at the state so these are the possible values of right and let's let's look at the last one also later so what is the value of uh, if this is my uh, there is nothing output if inputs are x right my db will be what my db would be b's or x b and x x or with each other right will be db so it will be zero over here it will be one one zero correct ne next again it will become zero one one similarly the da over here would be this particular equation and if you uh, substitute values it would be something like 0 0 0 1 1 0 0 right and basically if these are da and db next state inputs would be uh, this one only because qt plus 1 is equal to d so same would transfer here 0 0 0 1 0 1 1 0 1 0 so this is 1 1 sorry Correct. Now this is a, st a state uh, table. Now if we have to write a state diagram for this, uh, basically a rule. Uh, if we have like two flip flops, there should be two raised to power two four nodes. For m outputs, there should be like for one in uh, one input, there should be two outgoing arrows. How the state table would look like, right? Let's have a state zero zero. Let's have a state zero one. Let's have a state one zero. Let's have a state one one. When we are in zero zero, input is zero, output stays zero, right? So this would be something like correct. And in this particular example, we don't have any output, right? So we don't need to explicitly mention it over here right so we can remove it so in this case since we don't have any outputs we can simply mention zero over here correct now if we get one as an input what would happen zero zero one the next state is zero one so if we get we go here what happens in zero zero if zero comes we stay in zero is one but if input comes as one we move to one zero similarly uh, one zero input comes as zero right we stay in one zero if it is one we move on to one one in here if it is zero we stay in one one and if you complete the circuit like last element of truth table you will come to know if we put a one over here it will go back to zero zero state so basically if i tell you what kind of a circuit is this right this circuit uh, eventually came as something like this for 0 it remained in its state and for 1 it's moved so 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 so this circuit the state diagram which we drew was something like this so basically if input is equal to 0 next state is equal to present state if input is equal to 1 next state increments right so basically this is nothing but a 2 bit counter where whenever the input is there our counter moves from 00 to 01 to 10 
211 and once again once the counter increments it will come back to this state because 1 1 plus 1 is 0 with a carry out correct the state will become 0 0 it's since it's called a 2 bit counter it's also called as modulo 4 counter right and it counts from 0 to 3 repeatedly so this is uh, what we did over here is we saw two examples one with jk flip flop one with d flip flop and what we analyzed over here is uh, when we look at jk flip flop state table becomes very cumbersome because we have to take care of flip flop inputs and we have to drive next state out of it uh, because once we drive the next state right next state is a combination of it depends upon the characteristic equation jq bar plus k bar q and hence it's difficult to uh, it's, it becomes cumbersome, right? Similarly, we saw about a state diagram. We drew a state diagram and then we saw about a sequential circuit using a D flip flop. And using a D flip flop, the diagram became, the state table became very easy because our flip flop inputs are the same values as the next state. And that's why both the entries, we never had to calculate something like we did in the JK circuit, like JQ bar plus K bar Q. We only relied on the D value. After this, we again saw a state table example and then we ended up seeing that this particular D flip flop based circuit which we analyzed was nothing but a two bit counter which is also called as a modulo for counter, right? Just to summarize in particular case over here, summary is to analyze the sequential circuits, we need to understand how the flip flop change on each clock cycle according to their current values and inputs, right? Basically, uh, we need to see that output is whether a function of input function of next state present state if this is a case we spoke about this is being a milli machine and if it's only uh, input of this we spoke about being it being a Moore machine and then we saw that okay state table show all, all possible ways that the outputs and the state of a sequential circuit can change into based upon the inputs and the present state we spoke about state tables then we drew state diagrams as an alternative way of showing the same information and they being representing a information in a more readable way and this is all for this lecture and in the next lecture i would be talking about designing sequential circuits and this would as you would see this would be the opposite process here we had a circuit and we drew the table and we analyze the circuit over there right we would have a set of stages like okay we have a state a then the design moves from state a to state b and how do we construct this particular circuit we will have set of gates we will have set of flip-flops how do we end up implementing this particular circuit hope you like this lecture stay tuned for the next one thank you